All right, lads, how are you getting on? Welcome to my realistic career mode, Project Leeds. I'll be covering five games this episode, taking us up to game week seven in the Premier League, and also our first game in a cup competition. But before we do that, make sure to like the video if you're enjoying the Leeds career mode, and subscribe if you haven't already. For the fourth game of the season, and the first of this episode, we face Liverpool at Elland Road. Liverpool start the game off with an unreal long shot by Bobby Firmino, who puts Liverpool in the lead after just 10 minutes. Seven minutes later, we had a chance to reply as Rodrigo slips in Rafinha, who after a lovely dummy slots to pass his fellow Brazilian, Alisson, bringing Leeds in level with Liverpool. Firmino had another chance to get Liverpool the lead after some nice team play, but Messier was up to the task and kept the Brazilian from getting his second. But it didn't take long for Liverpool to get another chance. As after some nice passing that was similar to prime Barcelona, the former Atletico Madrid man Koke set up Salah to score and returned the lead to Liverpool. But we're not that kind of team that will let a goal easily stop us as we look to attack again. This time it's the Welsh Messi that equalises for us. Daniel James has been our player of the season so far. Liverpool didn't want to stop at two goals though as they look to take the lead for a third time. Fabinho lays it off to Firmino who puts it past Messier with a near post finish making a 3-2 to Liverpool. We're hoping that history will repeat itself as we get another attack started with some nice play from Rafinha, he passes it to our Spaniard who does a lovely simple pass to Dan James who, for the second time this game, fires it past Allison and keeps us in the game, making the game level once again. Liverpool have a corner in dire moments of this game, but results in nothing after the clearance by Firpo. Ref blows the whistle, ending the game as a draw. The final score, Leeds 3, Liverpool 3. We now go on the road to St James's Park as we look to get a win after a series of draws. We start off strong at Newcastle, with Rafinha running down the wing, blitzing past the Newcastle players. He then plays a beautiful pass to Bamford, who's just outside the box, who then does a cheeky pass to Roberts, who unfortunately drags the shot wide. Dan James uses his lightning quick pace to run down the wing as he waits for an option to open up. He gets one with Bamford running a darting line into the Jordy's box. He lets the shot off, but Dubravka was able to deal with it, with a lovely save across his goal. We're getting some lovely plays on the wing against Eddie Howe's men, with Ryan Kent playing the ball back inside after some tidy skill. Phillips picks out Roberts, who in turn drills it into the near post, but Dubravka has another world-class save, stopping the Welshman from scoring what would be his first of the season. That's all she wrote in St James's Park, with the points being shared as we get another draw. Improvement defensively as we manage to keep a clean sheet, but we couldn't get a goal thanks to Dubravka's heroics. He's a player I'll be keeping my eye on if we ended up needing a goalkeeper. Time for us to play our first cup game, which is away to Spurs. We've rotated our team a fair bit, giving our youngsters a chance to shine against one of the top six clubs. We get the first chance of the game, with Gelhard playing the ball into Kent, who then plays it back to Roberts. Roberts sends the former Rangers man down the wing who whips in the ball looking for Gellhardt. Which it does as we take a surprising lead against Spurs. Gellhardt scores a beautiful header past the French captain thanks to a super cross from Ryan Kent. The 
Spurs have a chance to equalise just before the end of the half as Son sends in the ball looking for Bowden. The second ball falls to a Leeds player as we're able to survive the Spurs attack. Kane and Son have some nice link-up play as they look to break down our defence. Some more Spurs players come offering support. But even with the extra men, it's still the Kane and Son show. As they link up once again, allowing Kane to get the shot off, which is somehow saved. But Spurs won't stop there, as after a beautiful ball, Son tries to score one of the goals of the season with a volley which was flying into the top corner. But Messier stops Spurs from scoring once again. With the difference in class, I had no choice but to waste time at the end of the game as I pass it around the back. We get to win the first round of the Carabao Cup against a world-class side, even with our weaker team. Our next game is back at home, with West Ham traveling to us. Hopefully we're able to carry on in winning ways against the Irons. West Ham get the first big chance of the game at the 34th minute, as Vlasic tries to blast the ball into our near post, but Messier continues his fine form with another big save. Rodrigo slips the ball into Bamford, who runs through on goal, but with the pressure from the West Ham defense, he pulls the shot wide and the whistle is blown. West Ham are searching for the first goal of this game, and after some nice passing, Bowen gets the ball into Antonio, who guarantees the goal by squaring to Vlasic, who hits it on the volley, giving West Ham the lead after 71 minutes. Vlasic has now scored three goals in six matches. West Ham are looking for the second goal, as Vlasic wants to repay Antonio, but the Jamaican international is unable to squeeze a pass for a French goalkeeper. The score remains 1-0. Searching for the equaliser in the dying moments of the game, as Kent tries to create something out of nothing. Grilich plays the ball into Roberts, who goes for the spectacular, but it wasn't a great strike at all, as we lose to West Ham at home. The Irons dominated us for the entire 90 minutes, but the next game was an easier one as Watford travelled to Ellen Road for what will be the final game of this episode. We desperately need 3 points following that defeat and numerous draws. We start the match off fast, with Gellhart getting the ball to Rafinha, who puts it past the cycling GK. We keep the pressure on, as Grilich wins the ball, plays it to Gellhart, who instantly gives it to Kent. Kent then drives into the box, and smashes it into the net, making it 2-0 after just 20 minutes. But we want more. The ball gets to Rodrigo, who after some trickery is able to get the ball to Gellhart. Who after running through, ends up 1-1 -on -one with Ben Foster. And he beats the former Red Devil, getting us the third goal just before the end of the half. Phillips and Grilich keep the ball between themselves until Phillips has enough space and goes for the shot outside the box, but it's just over the bar. Watford have committed men forward and after winning the ball back, we're able to go on the counter attack. Rodrigo is sent up the middle as he decides whether to score himself or lay it off to a teammate. The Spaniard tees up Rafinha who buries it and gets his second of the game. The score is now 4-0 to Leeds. Another counter attack is on. As Robert sends Gellhart down the line. He swings the ball across looking for Rafinha. The winger hits it first time, getting his hat trick and making a 5 0 lead. A great response to the loss against West Ham, and we have some tough choices to make regarding team selection, as Gellhard is outplaying Bamford currently. But I feel like it's too soon for him to be the main man regardless of form. That's the end of the episode. Make sure to like and subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you in the next episode of Project Leeds, coming soon.